Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our studies in the book of Acts. Specifically today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 10 verses 37 to 43. And the title of this message is Fulfilled and Appointed. Before we look into God's Word, let's stop, let's pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, thank you for each person looking in. Thank you for eternal life in Jesus. And thank you for loving us beyond our capabilities of even understanding. And now as we look at your Word, we ask that your Holy Spirit guide and direct in everything said and done, and that you would receive all the glory and honor. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please. We're going to read in verses 37 to 40 of Acts chapter 10. It says this, That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets uh, witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. It's a very full passage and it continues this portion of the book of Acts which is the transition section. The book of Acts always needs to be understood as a book of transition. The transition is that the apostles, the Jewish believers, the early church begin to see that the gospel is not just for Israel. It was promised first to Israel, which is why the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jewish person first, and also to the Gentile. So you see, the Gentile nations do, do hear about Jesus, the Messiah, but Israel is the, this, uh, the physical vehicle by which Messiah is displayed, given, and shown to the world. And so Israel physically bore the Messiah to the world, wrote the word of God to the whole world, is the witness nation of these things. Now, some people will say, well, you know, the majority of the Jewish people, they rejected him. And then God dealt and judged Israel, put them out of the land, so God's done with the Jewish people. If that were the case, then why again did Paul write, as I cited in Romans 1.16? Well, he wrote that before those things happened. Well, Jesus announced that those things would happen. Uh, in Matthew chapter 24 and 25, the immediate context was the abomination that makes desolate, which took place when Titus came and Tisha B'Av and um, the temple was destroyed. In fact, today, the day that I am um, uh, preaching and teaching this message is the eve of Tisha B'Av. It is the, the, the evening before the day in the Jewish rendering of time. A day begins the evening before in our rendering of time in the Western world. And so you see, Tish B'Av is the day where the Jewish people remember that the temple was destroyed. Now, why was the temple destroyed? Because the temple that was of the person of Jesus was the final offering. And there is no need for offerings anymore, blood offerings of animals and goats. In fact, in our studies in the book of Hebrews, if you join us on Sunday for that one, we're going to go to that very important verse where it says about, it talks about the blood of rams and goats is just no longer needed. So there are some similarities between the book of Acts and the book of Hebrews, Galatians as well, where the Jewish people begin to see it's not all wrapped up in the keeping of the law anymore. The law has been fulfilled. The law is not thrown away. The law is fulfilled. The law points to things. The law is good but it's not good for the full remission of sins. And that's what's spoken about in verse 43. So let's look at these verses bit by bit as we go through here. Verse 37, the word which I say you know, which was published throughout all of Judea. Well, that word published there is uh, simply understood literally as proclaimed. Now, when you read this in 
the literal English from the Koine Greek, it says this, you know, the having become thing, that which took place is what that means, throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which proclaimed John. It's not that John was proclaimed, which proclaimed of John. Jesus, the one from Nazareth. John proclaimed Jesus, the one from Nazareth. Now, you look in the Gospel of John, where Jesus comes to John, the baptizer, and John looks at him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So John, who was appointed as a prophet, the forerunner of Messiah, as the prophet Malachi talked about, the forerunner would come ahead of the Messiah. John, in fact, was Jesus' first cousin. and He was picked out from that part of the family line to be the forerunner, to announce the herald of the Messiah. A king will have a herald who will announce to the people that he is the ruler of, that he is coming, or that he is available, or that there perhaps are other things connected to all of who he is and his royal position. The herald of the Messiah, John the Baptizer, when he saw his cousin coming to be baptized of him, pointed out and proclaimed to everyone around, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now remember a few moments ago, I mentioned that that verse in the book of Hebrews that speaks about the fact that the blood of rams and goats, lambs, etc., they're no longer needed. Why? Because as John rightly described Jesus, he was the Lamb appointed of God. And that's what we also are seeing here in this passage. Jesus appointed of God. He was appointed by God. And it is a fulfillment of the prophets who came before Jesus. John was the last prophet ahead, the herald of Messiah, the forerunner of Messiah. But there were many other prophets who spoke to the coming of Messiah. Moses spoke of this one. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, he speaks about a prophet who will come of him you will have to listen. So you see, there's always going to be something that the people of God are going to have to listen to. Well. Let's look more at verse 37. The publish or publishing of the proclaim, proclamation throughout all of, all of Judea began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And that, that I've just explained to you. And then it says here how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Isaiah chapter 11 speaks about something who will, someone who will come out of the north, who will come out of Nazareth. The uh, religious leadership, the Sanhedrin, in the Gospel of John, chided uh, Nicodemus, saying, What prophet comes out of that place that you're speaking about? No prophet comes from there. But they were so indignant in their treatment of who Jesus was and wanted to dispose of him at any cost that they even ignored the fact that, one, he had his lineage which could be found in the temple. Luke chapter 2. He came, he was brought to the temple as an eight-day-old baby to be circumcised as according to the uh, laws and statutes of the laws of Moses of the house of Israel and for his birth to be rec uh, recorded in the temple. When the people came back from Babylon, from the captivity of Babylon, you read in Nehemiah and Ezra, you read the records of the people who came back. They knew who they were. Somehow, obviously, by inference, it doesn't say anywhere that they went and took all the, the records out of the temple and saved them, but they knew. They knew to keep them because they were looking forward to and waiting for the Messiah who would come from the line of the house of Judah. And he did. The people of uh, the religious leadership of Israel, it was a corrupt leadership of Israel. In the 190s BC, or was it the 90s BC? I can't remember exactly right now. You'll excuse me, and I'll make sure I know that for you next time. The, uh, le the lineage of the high priest was overruled when 
one brother wanted to be high priest and had his own his older brother who was the high priest executed so he could take his place so there is corruption unfortunately within the leadership of Israel at this point and the high priesthood is not what it is supposed to be there's also division amongst the high priests in the house of Israel at this time as well there are Pharisees who believe in a resurrection there are Sadducees who believe in no resurrection the majority were Sadducees on the Sanhedrin Council and Jesus spoke explicitly about life after death that's another reason they could not accept him and they wanted him executed let's go on in verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him so Peter is proclaiming here that this is God with this specific man and look at the things he did Jesus did all the things that were expected of the Messiah to do he brought back uh, the dead to life he healed the uh, gave sight to the blind he healed people of many illnesses and other related things and all along he proclaimed as he did in John chapter 8 verse 58 before Abraham was I am he said who he was he was God in verse 39 and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hung on a tree so you see here they slew him they executed him hung him on a Roman tree this is the Roman cross now you know you'll you look at various church buildings and you'll see these uh, very specific crosses and um, I'm not going to say that the one that Jesus was hung on impaled upon looked exactly like that they didn't but it, however they did look the point is that he was hung he was hung out to be executed in a most uh, in ignominious way in order to provide remission for sins which is the last verse of this portion we're looking here today but G Peter is saying here we're witnesses we saw all of this I am telling you about these things and he is uh, proclaiming publishing as it says in verse 37 but now he's proclaiming to these Gentiles about who Jesus is in verse 40 him God raised up the third day and showed him openly so he raised him from the dead and he was seen openly now there are other portions parts of the book of Acts and other places where it's it's it talks about many people seeing him Paul Saul the uh, who would be called out and later on we're going to meet him in this book of Acts He's called out as the apostle to the Gentiles. He is going to go out and um, preach the gospel to the Gentile world. But here's Peter, the trailblazer, going first. Now look at what it says in verse 41. This is important. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who do it eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So these are the immediate who saw him after the day of uh, on the day of Pentecost the day the church was born they knew him they ate with him they um, spoke with him they saw him resurrected from the dead and this is the most important point made of what the gospel is about if Jesus is not resurrected from the dead then our faith is futile and we might as well just be making a lot of noise but here it says many saw him these are eyewitness accounts being reiterated here. Now, we're 2,000 years plus past these eyewitness accounts. You'll get skeptics today saying, how can you trust that word? Well, then I guess you can't say you can trust anything that you read, can you? Now, I am not a trustworthy, uh, I'm not, uh, excuse me, I'm not finding uh, things that I read in the media today to be trustworthy. But I will tell you the one thing about the word of God it is trustworthy here's the reason why every single prophecy that pointed to the first coming of Messiah was fulfilled to the letter even to the time and place read Daniel's prophecy chapter uh, yes Daniel's prophecy chapter 9 verse 24 to 27 as Dr. Walbert used to describe it in his commentary on Daniel he calls it the timeline to the Messiah it is the cornerstone to the scriptures and when you understand it literally you understand how everything about what the scriptures are about hinges on knowing
the timeline to the Messiah. He came at the appointed time in history. Peter was one of those people who was there. Skeptics today will say, how do you know these things? Well, it was pointed forward and he came at that appointed time. Do the calculations and you'll see that the uh, weeks of years that come that comes to that point the 49 weeks of years brings us to the point of Jesus being executed as it says here hung on a tree buried and three days later resurrected from the dead and shown to specific witnesses as verse 41 says to us verse 42 and he commanded us to preach unto people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and the dead. The quick and the dead are those who are going to be in the grave, those who are going to go and need to hear about Jesus. And you see, you may hear about Jesus here today, and you may just dismiss it and say, there's no truth to this. How can anyone believe these these stories, these fairy tales, here's what we'll tell you. As I've already said, the prophets which spoke of these things, spoke of them, some of them more than 800 years. Moses spoke about a coming appointed one in the 1400s BC. That's more than 1400 years before Jesus came. Job who was a contemporary of Abraham. So this would be, make him in the 1800s BC, declared that even if his body would go into the grave and his body would totally decay and there would be nothing left but dust, he knows that he would be raised up to see his Redeemer who he knows will live, his Redeemer. He commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that which is he was ordained of God, called out of, by God. That's what the word ordained means. Called out, singled out, called to do the things which he was done to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. There is where we stop today. There is that telling point in, the, in this passage here, that all who believe will receive remission of sins. That word remission literally means forgiveness. That's the great thing about believing in what Jesus accomplished on that cross, that your sins will be forgiven. Forgiven of God. How? Because God became a man in the person of Jesus who willingly allowed himself to be hung on that tree he was executed, found guilty of certain laws of, of the Roman Empire, but he is, took the guilt of the whole world upon his own shoulders in order that all you need to do is believe that when he hung on that tree and said, it is finished, in other words, it was finished, his giving of himself for the payment for sin, that it was paid for all time for the total forgiveness of sins. That's why you can say, if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that you will spend an eternity with God. If you believe that he died in your place as if you were the only person that ever lived and ever uh, had to uh, be made right with God, that he paid that penalty for your sin. Fulfilled prophecy appointed of God. And it's for all people, Jewish and Gentile alike, which is what we as a ministry do, Israel's Hope Ministries. We exist to give the gospel to all people. And we are a ministry that relies on God to meet our needs. We're a faith ministry. And we're trusting God to meet our needs as we continue to go through the summer months. And if the Lord might have you to consider a special gift so that we can continue into the autumn, giving is down in the summertime, and it is right now, and we would ask that you might consider a special gift to Israel's Hope Ministries at this time. 
if you are interested in looking at other messages and this series in the Book of Acts, you can go to our webpage at www.ihopecanada.org. There you'll find messages on the Book of Acts, the Book of Hebrews, and our series on uh, riding out the storm, which was a biblical is a biblical response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we, re we trust God to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis, and that God moves his people to do that. You can go to our website, www.ihopecanada.org, and you can give there if you feel led of the Lord to do that, by a need transfer, or through our PayPal um, uh, connection. And if you want to send a check in the regular mail, as many have in the past, you can do that as well. Our P.O. box is noted there in uh, Ottawa, Canada. If you're in the United States and would like to give to the work of Israel's Hope Ministries, uh, you can go, you can send a check to I Hope USA, 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio, 044450. Just make sure you put on the memo line of the check, uh, I Hope Canada or Grossman Support Canada, either one will work. Thank you for looking in here today, and we thank you for every, every one of you who give, who encourage us. If you have a message, uh, would like to have a question about something that you've heard here, email me at ron at ihopecanada.org, and I'll be glad to try and answer your questions. Let's close our time in prayer. Father God, thank you for each person who has looked in today. Thank you for eternal life in Jesus. Thank you for meeting our needs. Now we ask that you bless the time we've had pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, we say Shalom.